action. <laughs> uh, this Whoa. podcast is brought to you by Blue Apron. The apron that is blue. Sure. Uh, you guys know Blue Apron. We talk about it. We eat it. Uh, cats eat it. Dogs eat it. Everyone in our family. My dog, his we're, cat. <laughs> we're not a... F- we're Everybody. For eight weeks, ending on uh, February 22nd, Blue Apron is teaming with Whole30 to bring you delicious recipes. The menu will feature two Whole30 approved recipes each week, like seared steaks and warm lemon salsa verde. Man, salsa, lemon salsa verde. I oh, mean, sorry. With roasted broccoli and sweet <laughs> potato. I got excited. Uh, and chicken and kale orange salad and spicy tahini dressing. Kickstart your new year with Blue Apron and whole like they always say happy blue year happy blue year my friend happy blue Uh, year gareth and i at least once a week we get together we cook a a nice blue apron dish Mm. uh i think we'll probably uh do the roasted broccoli and sweet potato because you're a non-meat guy and you're my sweet potato um but man that warm and lemon salsa verde is really just screaming out of me you're not seeing other dishes are you i also would like to see you prepare uh a little lemon salsa verde. In I'll that give you a little, little lemon apron, little apron I got. Yeah. yeah, it's very little. It's for a doll, That's what which I'm I think about. is gross for me to wear, but I'm don't, wearing it. Don't worry about it. I'm loving it. Uh, Blue Apron, uh, obviously very uh, convenient. They have a lot of uh, variety. Uh, a lot of the stuff can be cooked in under 45 minutes. Menus change every week based on what's uh, in season. Uh, yeah, so it's sure. good. Uh, very flexible, 12 new recipes each week. You can pick two, three, four recipes, whatever you want. Uh, high quality. Non-GMO ingredients, uh, meat with no added hormones. Did you have to? <laughs> I think I did. Was that necessary? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think so. Okay. Uh, so, like I said, it's it's a super uh, easy thing. You can get two-person meal plans. You can get family meals. You can get a wine plan that comes with wine. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Boy, and that one will get a hold of you. Because if there's one thing I don't need when I'm drinking wine, it's less reasons to leave my home. Blue Apron is treating. I like Blue Apron's here with more wine. <laughs> Blue Apron is treating, okay. treating the doll. Guess listeners I'll just play with these dolls all day again. To thirty dollars off your first order while you visit blueapron.com slash dollop. So check out this week's menu and get your thirty dollars off with free shipping at blueapron.com slash dollop. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Thank you, Dave. Nailing that tag. Just very natural. Now say you're a oh boy. Say you're a guy. Sure. And uh, and everything seemed pretty set with uh, you know passing this big sort of budget thing and and everyone had made agreements and everyone was kind of on board and then you came out and you were like yeah, I don't want it to do again okay and then everybody uh, everybody wanted to kill you <laughs> okay sure uh, I mean and everything stopped right so what I'm saying is this guy needs something called talk space okay. The Dollop is sponsored by Talkspace, which is an online therapy company that lets you message a licensed therapist from anywhere at any time. All you need is a computer with uh, the internet, or uh, you can go to Talkspace mobile uh, app. That means you can improve your mental health even if you've had trouble making it, you know, in the past. Right. Like you. That's fair. Um, fair. A lot of people have a hard time fitting uh, therapy into their life, so this is a, a, a great way to do that. Uh, you can get stuff off your chest. You can talk about uh, your dad, or you can talk about Gareth's dad. Uh, a lot of people talking about my dad. You can talk about uh, your dad, Fred. Uh, you can talk. You about, can talk about right side Fred. You can talk about your your who your did the I'm so sexy son. or either one of your sons who are going to prison. Sure. Um, you oh. can talk about how your wife hates totally. you and is rarely seen with you anymore, mm. and probably doesn't have sex with you. This is also she might be a little mad about. I don't know if you had sex with a, a porn star. Dave, and then you I mean, her good off. lord, um, good lord. Maybe sir. maybe things are just very stormy. In good your life. lord, sir. Remember, therapy isn't just about venting your innermost thoughts or digging into your child memories. It's also about practical everyday strategy strategies for stress management and living a happier a life. The Talkspace platform has over two thousand licensed. Well, therapists. I know my therapist told me to grow an inch. Who are experienced without doing anything in my 70s in addressing life changes we all face to match with a perfect therapist for a fraction of the price of a traditional therapy. Go to Talkspace.com slash dollop and use the code dollop to get $30 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's dollop and Talkspace.com slash dollop. Talk about Stormy. (laughs) I don't know if that's theirs. You're listening to the dollop. This is a bi-weekly American history podcast. 
Each week, I, drinker of seltzer, mm. looker of iPads, juke driver, <laughs> Dave Anthony, reads a story from American history. To his friend, Gareth Reynolds, Reynolds <laughs> who has no, no idea, idea what the, the topic, topic is going to be, be about. about. Remix is Jam Pat. Jam Pat? I'm the fucking hippo guy. Dave, okay. My name's Gary. <laughs> My name's Gary. Wait. Is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tiggly Podcast. Okay. This is like Anarchy. On a five-part coefficient. <laughs> Five rounds of play. Now hit him with the puppy. You both present sick arguments. <laughs> no sleep tell hippo. No sleep tell hippo. That action partner. Hi, Gary. No. I see done, my friend. No. No. <laughs> Rhoda. Rhoda in the court. Um, Gareth, we have a special guest. People missed him, Dave. People so for we those bring, for those people who are who are watching. Pat? I'm the fucking hippo guy. Dave, okay. Oh, let's turn that off. Um, we uh, we have a special guest. Uh, another person from Gareth's life. It is Jose. Jose, go ahead and say something. Say, say hola, Jose. Jose's in the studio, say looking hola. really happy. Say hola. He's a natural. Talk. 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 Like Blue Apron? Talk. Oh, buddy. So well, I'll sorry. tell you what. Uh, bringing a cat in. Well, this is uh, just for the people who missed him, Dave. And here he is. I'm over it. Okay, me too. <laughs> Say bye, Jose. <laughs> Say bye. That was a good. Get him right up. Get him right up in the camera. Let let the people see Jose. Let the people see the cat. Oh, uh, oh boy, this is going great. <laughs> that was great. Put him back in his tank. Uh, the cat obviously lives in a tank. It's a heavy, uh, heavy cat seal thing. Um, I was watching uh, Planet Earth with uh, Dave Attenborough, and uh, they, back. they showed uh, okay. they showed a young Jose swimming with dolphins. Okay, I haven't watched the new Blue Planet yet. I'm very excited you though. No, I've got it ready. Uh, I was trying to get F- Finn to watch it, but he kept trying to watch. He kept wanting to watch cartoons. Well, okay, that's. I mean, let him know it's his world. Um, so we got dates coming up. Uh, a lot of these, you know, a lot of our dates are sold out. So we've had a second show. We've had a second show in San Francisco on the second of February. We've had a second show in Seattle on the twenty second of February. On the twenty third, we've had a second show in Portland, uh, Indianapolis. We have added a second show on the third of March, and then uh, Minneapolis sold out on the sixteenth of August. So we are uh, figuring out a bigger space. Uh, so that'll happen. Just Metrodome or or a second show, whatever. But it'll happen. Yep. We're going to go to the Metro Dome. I don't know what that is, but... Uh, I think it's gone. Uh, it's it ju- is gone. It's just a big place for Metro. We'll go there. Um, do you have any dates or anything you want to talk about? Oh, I'd- Dave, people can go to GarethReynolds.com. There you go. There and you they go. can just check out all the stuff. This uh, Wednesday, uh, I will be at the Improv doing a show with Karen Kilgariff and Karen Anderson, and we're going to show a video of, of our our earliest performances that we um, of stand up that we actually videotaped and then we will critique each other's uh. <laughs> those are the best I did this show where I like you had to read your first from your first stand up notebook and I didn't start doing stand up till a little later but I did write a lot of stand up when I was oh, in college yeah. and I was reading through it and there were so many lines where I was like I'm just like you guys <laughs> Like, I'd be writing those out, like, being like, yeah, maintain your relatability, Gareth. The iconic stand-up. Hey, we're hey. like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like you, gang. Except not. Um, and then uh, we were going to be doing uh, a show in Thailand on uh, da, 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 in, the, in June. Um, you can go to the uh, Little Dum Dum Club website, and they have the information there. Um, Thailand. A place for podcasts. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's their slogan. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent on that. So, podcasts and tsunamis. That's closer. January 10th, 1837. Oh boy, that's a rough era. Larsena and Pennington. Who? Larsena. Look, you can look at it right there. There's her name. Okay, Vlarchana. It's, well, I wish it was, but that's not well, that's not what it said when I looked it up. Okay. Uh, she was born in Nashville, Tennessee. Sure. She had 11 brothers and sisters. Okay. Because her parents liked to do it. Okay. And she um, ended up with one good sister. Uh, <laughs> Elias and uh, and Julia Ann were her parents. 
Uh, Larsena's uh, grandfather had fought under George Washington at Valley Forge. Okay. Which you're a big fan of. I've always loved it there. One of your favorite battles. Top nine. Uh, Julianne didn't last long after uh, Larsan was born. She died within a year. Sure, of course. Of giving birth, so yep. mom's out of the picture. Okay, mom's gone. Um, the family then moved to Texas, where they lived for a bit. Okay. Uh, but then it was decided they would move on again, this time to California. Okay, interesting run. Uh, to get there, they would go through southeastern Arizona, which was not the safest place at the time. Oh, or now. Or now. Yeah. I like when you add stuff that's uh, to- like topical. Topical, yeah, that's my role here. That David. was really good. I pepper in these topical moments. Yeah. By the way, I've given up the jokes and characters. Do I people know. know about that? Uh, they figured it out uh, two paragraphs in. <clears throat> the land had just been. I'm quote, sorry. Am I not stepping it up enough for you? <laughs> <laughs> the land had just been quote purchased from Mexico. Via oh man, the... imagine purchasing that from Mexico. <clears throat> You're probably like. Uh, you know what you'd be like? You'd be like the reverse Donald Trump. You'd be like, uh, we want you guys to build a wall and we'll pay for it. <laughs> it's not. It, 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 we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Oh. Uh, uh, the Gaza Dam purchase, it was purchased after the, the United States basically con- uh, you know, won, beat up Mexico. And they were like, hey, why don't we buy this? Okay. Uh, the Spanish and Mexicans uh, had called the area Apacheria. Sure. Uh, after the Native American tribe that had made it a nightmare to try to settle there. Okay, sure. <clears throat> but Americans will settle anywhere, and rich guy Charles Poston reached an agreement with a powerful Apache chief that allowed the miners and lumberjacks who worked for him to work in the area safely. Okay. So he strikes a deal. I, I would imagine he paid them off somehow because he's a rich guy. Right. right. Well, that's how it works. <clears throat> so as far as I know. I'm used to it. And then Poston pushed Secretary of War Jefferson Davis to provide troops to protect his guys that he had just made an agreement with the Apaches for their safety. So he's, so double, he's doubling down. Right, okay, the old double down? Yeah, double right? down. Okay. Uh, he's just covering all his bases, right? So sure. the Sonora Exploring and Mining Company made its headquarters at an abandoned Spanish presidio in Tubac in 1856. You in love t- tu- Tubac. 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 Yeah, like, okay. like Tupac? It's where he's from. Is it where Tupac is from? Yeah. Interesting. Tupac was born in the desert in Arizona. Interesting. Okay. Desert, All right. I'm liking this. Desert rat. Okay. Uh, so, and then, as he had asked for uh, troops to come, Fort Buchanan was built just to the east of Tupac. Sure. This is, mm-hmm. uh, it was isolated. It had no walls. Uh, but it did bring in new settlers because just because they figured they'd be protected by no soldiers. walls anywhere. No walls. There were no walls. It was just uh, sounds like a house. Okay, <laughs> sure. Does it? I tried to find pictures of it, but there's no pictures. Which well, means... because why would you take pictures of something with no walls? What are you taking a picture? Well, of? You're taking a picture of a house. You take pictures of houses with no walls. Yeah, that's what I would do. So there's no like load bearing areas. Load bearing. Okay. I mean, why would I speak up with this attitude? You want to see uh, the lumberjacks? Sure, you know I do. There's Arizona lumberjacks at the time. Oh wow! Killing okay. Yeah. Um, so sure, that, that wasn't a dangerous job then. Uh, no, no. Arizona lumberjack. No. no, you're totally killing Fine. it. No, any any lumberjack before the 1900s was loving it. Yeah, uh, it's. Time. I mean, that's still a very dangerous job, Dave. Not yeah, to be no, serious. Like I said, me. I've. I'm here my, for just uh, uh, color my, commentary. My dad's a lumberjack. Mm. Uh, so uh, soon cattle. Lumberjack Daniels. <laughs> it's going to be a bad show. Uh, soon cattle and crops were popping up, and by the end of 1856, around 1,000 people had settled nearby. Okay. Right? Yep. Uh, the Chirawaka Apache raiding parties would ride past without bothering the miners, ranchers, lumberjacks, and farmers on the way to uh, raids in Sonora. It's because he made a deal, right? Right. Poston felt he had found heaven. Quote, we had no law but love and no occupation but labor, no government, no taxes, no public debt, no politics. It was a community in a perfect state of nature. Well, Dave, I mean, shall we end on a high note? Because Let's wrap uh, it, up. it feels like this is pretty good. You know what? Nothing happens after this. No, it's just no. Great. Nope. Three miles to the east was the uh, Sonoita settlement, it was made of seven ranches. The census of 1860 listed 51 Americans in the valley, named as farmers, laborers, a cook, a clerk, a shoemaker, a lawyer, a printer, and one man 
labeled an idiot. Whoa, wait, why, why do they? In what? the census. <laughs> wait, that's, someone decided or the man decided? That's just what the census worker called him. So or maybe you, the guy was like, I'm the idiot. Hello, I'm Todd. I'm an absolute idiot. Uh, I'm actually a fucking idiot. Uh, yeah, I, we were wondering, should we both be here? He's a fucking idiot, and I'm just a total idiot. I smile at apples. <laughs> and I uh, obviously put apples down my pants. Again, I'm Todd. I have a fucking idiot. And this is a fucking idiot. So, a lot of crossover. So, um, American women started making their way into the valley. Uh, that included the Pennington girls. Okay. Because most, most of the people there are men. Right. right. Sounds... So now American women start coming in. Right. Um, now the Pennington girls, uh, they they remember they were going to make their way to California. That family. Right. Uh, but then they stopped at Fort Buchanan in June 1857 because a Larsena came down with a fever. Okay, so they're in Arizona now because she has a fever. Yeah, on their they way were, to Cal. Yeah, so they stopped to get a little bit of help. I okay. want to see a picture of her. Sure. Uh, she is a beaut. Okay. As they say in the business. Sure. Um, actually, very for back then, you the know, pictures times, we usually see. Yeah, well, a lot of times it's really hot. hard to tell the attractiveness of anyone from that time because, like, everything's just a little weird. Yeah, yeah. They, like she, I mean, she looks like she's like a doily's eating her. I, I know it took a long. And she has like Superman curls up. It front. took a long time to take pictures. I believe back then, maybe I'm wrong. No, that's that wasn't that the deal. You With had to hold still for like, yeah, yeah, you had to hold still for ages. I don't know how long that went on, but two days. <laughs> <laughs> you blinked and you ruined the picture. I'm sorry, Father. I'll try again. So while Larsina healed uh, in the fort, the Apache stole a bunch of Elias's oxen. So her dad's oxen get stolen. Okay. Um, that's not good for the whole situation. Right. Um, so this forced Elias to halt the journey to California, and he settles down with his 12 kids on the Santa Cruz River close to Mexico. So the, this is when you're <laughs> moving based on theft. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? All right, well, we live here. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Okay, Yeah. done. Um, the family dug irrigation ditches and planted crops. Uh, they sold the crops to the soldiers and the miners, and the Apaches left the family alone. After they'd stolen all their... Well, after they stole right. the uh, oxen. All right, we're cool now. Now we're all good. Now we are cool. Uh, so, you know, they're stuck there. It's been a couple of years. Okay. Uh, you want to see uh, Apaches? Apaches are uh, nice. uh, one of the it's good most vibe. badass... Badass Good vibe, there. too. Um, so he has eight daughters in an area where there aren't a lot of ladies to go around. Should so we be doing this? He's holding. You know what I'm talking about? He's holding. He's he, Oh, you mean he's holding. Like, yeah. I'm sure. I mean, he's got to be. That's got to be like trying to keep like raw meat away from puppies. Um, that's a good description. I don't know if anything's changed. Uh, there's a couple of girls. Okay. Um uh, so British soldier Dr. John Hall arrived in the Santa Cruz Valley in the summer of 1857, and he went to a party at the ranch and reported about the women, quote, but few ladies, American, graced the party, but those present were the bells of the valley, good-looking and true specimens of frontier coquettes. See, it, it does Ooh. sound like a Bachelor spinoff. Like, this is like a Bachelorette spinoff. Uh, womankind, white, by that he meant, are scarce in Arizona, so all the young squatters present were deeply smitten. Oh, boy. That's just... So she's the, well, like one of the sisters. Is not, it's not going great for her, but the, she's she's hot. The Larson, Larson is hot, right? She's, uh, the, she's the hottest okay. in, in, in the area. Okay. All the soldiers and miners were after her, and she ended up marrying John Page on Christmas Eve in, two, uh, in Tucson in 1859. Okay. John was said to be handsome and one of the wildest men in the valley. He came to Arizona with uh, a famous gunman named Bill Ake. And after they were married, John took Larcina to live on a ranch on the Santa Cruz River. Uh, Larcina would tutor the owner's ward, which... Tutor the owner's ward? Yeah, it's, you know, so a ward is like you bring someone in and... Uh, I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, someone's going to yell at me on Twitter. Okay. Um, so he, there was a widow. Uh, she ha She's a, a Mexican. She has a 10-year-old girl. So he brings her in to, like, care for her and and teach her. And, sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, so the, the ranch owner's name was William Kirkland. He is uh, he's a rich, richy, rich man. Um, Kirkland? 
Kirk Kirkman or Kirkland? Oh, I don't know. well, I, 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 I have two. It could have changed with the thing. Big we'll get, fan we'll get back to Captain. It. I think it's Kirkman. John Kirkland. Um, so uh, the girl's name is Mercedes. That was early. Uh, yeah, that Can I, I was, ask a dummy I was question. Totally, I never. What was her Mercedes? I ne- I couldn't find anything about her, and I was like, "How is there a girl named Mercedes?" What? Off of the car. <laughs> uh, we're from here. By the way, I just well, saw I just saw an ad on TV. Oh, here we go. You get fired up when you see People ads on TV. People are packing stuff like there's an emergency, right? Everyone's being told to evacuate. And they're packing stuff into an SUV, VW, uh, VW type thing, Volkswagen, right? Sure. And, they're, and, and then they're like, oh, we have more room, more room, more room. And then by the time they finish packing, because there's so much room in the car that everyone's already left. And then they're just driving out. And they show a missile fucking flying over the car. Sorry, <laughs> this is a commercial? Like, I could not. The hilarity of nuclear war is back. Didn't you think that this shift to, like, accepting our demise would have a little more fight to it? <laughs> Like, I just expected the Morgan Freeman, there's a meteor headed towards Earth, kind of like, hey, what are we going to do? Uh, I'm going to do heroin and have sex one more time, you know, or whatever, like, your last minute thing. Is. But instead, uh, we're sort of now, like, in this middle ground where we're like, I mean, it feels like the check's in the mail. Am I wrong, gang? <laughs> we're going to go down. All right, so Mercedes is, uh, she's 10. Uh, uh, Larsana, Larsana is teaching her uh, how to speak English on the ranch. John works for the ranch owner, but then he also goes to work as a lumberjack 13 miles east. There's a lot of mosquitoes in the area, mm. and soon uh, Larsena becomes ill again. Oh, boy. She's got a little malaria. Uh, well, a lot of people at the time came down with something they didn't know, but now we know it is valley fever. Okay. Um, it was decided Larsena would be better off breathing air in the mountains away from the swampy uh, Valley mosquito-y. fever means what? You just are like... A valley fever is a really fucked up thing. It can be... I think it's like a, a fungal thing, and it can get into you if you have like an immune problem. You can die from... Like, it's really gnarly. It's in the it's in the Central Valley of California. Okay. So it's, it's bad. Okay. Um, but most people get over it, but some people don't, basically. Um, so... Uh, this is uh, March 15th, 1860. Uh, they take her uh, up into the mountains. Uh, Larsena and Mercedes were put into an ox cart uh, supply wagon and headed for the lumber camp that John works at. Okay. Mercedes went along because Larsena was teaching her English and she wanted to still keep learning. <laughs> I uh, mean, the English lessons must have taken a turn a little bit. I'm dying. I am dying. <laughs> no, I'm dying. I am dying. It's hot in here. Hot in here. I'm hot. Are you hot? I am all hot. Are you I hot? S- I'm, sweat- I'm sweating. I'm sweat- sweating. I, my eyes are throbbing? Eyes throbbing and I'm sweating in here. Yeah. My eyes are throbbing and I sweating in here. I can't see. I'm seeing stars? See stars in here. I have diarrhea? Di- I have diarrhea. <laughs> Call help? Call, call help? <laughs> it can't <kinda> help. <laughs> so Kirkland was worried. So she's a parrot. Yeah. <laughs> she's not smart. Okay. So K- Kirkland is worried, uh, you know, because it's Apache territory. So he sends a, r- a ranch hand along with him, uh, this guy Randall, to ride along. Uh, Kirkland also sent a rocking chair and feather bed as wedding gifts. Okay. <laughs> sure. While the agreement with the Chiriwaka Apaches kept them from attacking the ranches, other Apache bands north had no such agreement. So the group camps about two miles away from the lumber camp okay. destination uh, at night. In the morning, they ate breakfast early, and then John went ahead to get to work, right? So yeah. he's got to work. He figures Randall and the ladies will come up later. And then Randall decides he sees a deer, and he starts tracking the deer to kill it because he wants to have that for dinner. Sure. Um, and Mercedes and Larsena waited. So now someone who's dying from mosquitoes and a 10-year-old are waiting. In Apache You're not country. setting up anything, nope. are you? In no, Apache it's territory. Fine. Okay. Uh, so Mercedes is playing outside, and Larsena is in the rocking. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> is sitting in the rocking chair in a tent. Okay. Oh, she's got one of those little like, mos- or just like a regular tent. I'm picturing like a little mosquito. I tent. don't think it's re- no. I think it's no. It's not that fancy. <laughs> like a veil. No. A body veil. Okay. Uh, so then she heard Mercedes screaming. Interesting. Moments later, an Apache burst into the tent. And Larsena reached for a pistol, but he grabbed her and yanked her out of the tent. Mercedes tried to run uh, to Larsena, but another Apache grabbed her. Altogether, there were five Apaches. They were armed with lances and bows and arrows. Four were young and one was old. He spoke a bit of Spanish. 
and he told Larsena that they had killed John as he was drinking from a stream. Now, so this means they've been watching them. Right. Right? So Larsena started screaming for help, and then one of the Apaches pushed a spear into her breast, and she stopped screaming. Ah, Because okay. that'll, that'll do it. Okay. Um, when you say that, you're just talking about the sort of, like, the 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 push of pressure. He didn't actually puncture. I know, I, no, he didn't. Right. I think he. J- it was like a like what I do in a bar. It's like a threatening. What um, you do in a bar? Hmm? You just said like what I do in a bar. Yeah, I carry a uh, spear. What? Uh, so what? <laughs> Nothing. That's why I don't go to bars anymore. Yeah. Or... So the Apaches go through all the stuff in the camp, and they're looking for anything good to take. Right. Okay. Sure. And they couldn't carry much because they were on foot, so they cut uh, the bags of flour that they had brought, and they slashed up the feather bed. Okay, for Which so is they're just fucking bullshit. Like I don't care what sort of sort of sh- genocidal shit is going on. Leave feather beds out of it. Feather yeah. beds are fucking awesome. Dow is Dow. Down. <laughs> Did you have a misspelling in your head? Yeah. <laughs> Did I tell you about the time when I took a summer break and I came back from summer break and I spelled of O V? I was like in sixth grade and I was like, that can't be right. <laughs> I was like looking down, I was like, I mean, I know it's right, but it feels <sighs> off. Okay. So they're just des- they're just destroying for no reason other than to just kind of be like, hey. Yeah, well, I mean, they're not happy about whatever's going on in the in sure. the territory. So um so they take what they can carry and then they march uh Larsena and Mercedes north toward their uh camp. Okay. Randall comes back at noon after uh, How is everyone? hunting down that deer. Couldn't find him. Hey, guys. He I ran away. Deer. Oh, hello. Now, what happened to the flower in the bed? Hey, where is everyone? Uh, he sees, obviously, there's a problem. He runs to get John and the other lumberjacks. John jumps on a horse and rides as fast as he can back to Kirkland's ranch. So John's cool. We're yeah, told John's, John's dead, John's... but he was fine. Yeah, well, they just said that. To... So not among everything else, they're fibbers? They're lying. Uh, so he gets to the ranch and tells Kirkland what happened, and then a message is sent to Fort Buchanan, and then John and other ranch hands uh, get fresh horses and went uh, back to find the Apache's trail. Okay. Right? So the alert's out. They're on the trail. Now, Larsena marked the trail as the Apaches marched her off. She would break twigs, and she would tear off pieces of her apron and drop them. Okay. Apron, great. Twigs? <laughs> what? I think she's this way. There's more twigs. There's well, twigs everywhere, John, you idiot. But freshly broken twigs might be a These are thing. freshly snapped twigs. Look. They just snapped these. They're this way. <laughs> John's an idiot, right? John's oh, John. Over here. Look, more leaves. They were here. Oh, John. Aha, uh-huh, a bird in the sky. Not going to fool me, bird. They're close. I can tell by the clouds. <laughs> Larsena tries to tell Mercedes what she's doing uh, and for her to do it too, but an Ab- Apache heard them talking and he separates them. Jesus, okay. And then he takes a gun, that, the, her, the gun he'd taken from her at the tent, and he points it at her head. Okay. And he starts taunting her, which, <laughs> I mean. Tough position. It's just fucking what you do in that situation. Uh, it's just tough if you're the person with the gun being, you know, being taunted at you because it's like, I'll negotiate if there's one pointed at me, but it seems like you just want to have fun. Girl, just no. Marcena, Mar- Mar- Mercedes, Marcena. sorry, Mercedes starts to sob because she's ten. Sure, they do that. Uh, and then one of the Apaches picked up Mercedes, put her on his shoulders, and marched up the hill. Um, in the end, they decided to spare our Marcena's life, and they and they kept walking. Now, where's La- Mercedes? They they're ahead, just ahead of the group. Mm-hmm. Now, Larsena was, uh, she's still a member. She's getting over the illness. She's got the illness, so she's already weak. Um, And then now they're getting tired of her slowing them down, right? Okay. Well, she is spending most of her time tearing aprons and throwing twigs. Right. She's preoccupied. (laughs) What Uh, a weak apron. uh, So, yeah. I love that she has an apron on. That she's, yeah, an apron. Always ready for cooking. (laughs) Always ready for cooking. She's in the mountains. Are we cooking? (laughs) Are we cooking? She's in the mountains dying from... (laughs) from valley fever and uh, don't forget for when you're better keep the apron on it'll be a quicker transition to cooking who wants biscuits Uh, you shouldn't be cooking right now but I think we'd all love a round is what blue blue apron oh fuck nicely done we should have done that Aaron it's blue apron (laughs) um so uh 
Better get she's an got, extra bag got, of croutons for that. Uh, she's got a long dress on, which okay. isn't great for hiking. Um, and then at sunset, the group stops on top of a ridge at the edge of a cliff. And the Apache, who had been keeping an eye on the rear, you know, seeing what's going on, if anyone's following sure. him, come, comes up and says the white men are coming after them. They're on the trail. Okay. So the oldest Apache motioned for Larsena to take off her dress. Interesting. So now, she strips down to her undergarment, which is basically she's just got a slip on at this point. He's doing, okay. I think they're going to do some photo, photo shoot. Oh, it's a whole spread. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Hurry, if we're going to get this calendar, we got to move now. <laughs> Let's go. I need 12 different fucking looks, boys. Come on. Uh, so a second Apache then took her shoes. Okay. She was then told to walk forward, and when she took a step, she was speared in the back. She fell sideways down the cliff. She heard Mercedes scream and the Apaches whoop. So okay. there's like there's like differing Sure. There's different emotions going on. Yeah. With, it's like a the group. It's like an away game. <laughs> but her fall was stopped by a small pine tree. Okay. So she falls about 17, 18 feet Oof. and then gets stuck. With a spear still? No, they just stabbed. Oh, her. they just stabbed. Yeah, her. Okay. They, it went in and out. Oh, okay. I got. I brought uh, so you can see what they what their spears look like. Okay. So they're pretty pretty tight. Fun. Pretty rad. Oh, so it looks like it went through some spaghetti. She got stabbed by that. Yeah, that one did. That was during that. That one's taken from the spaghetti wars. Oh, I'm very familiar. Uh, so they see that she fell down and got stuck. Uh, so two Apaches climb down and then they. Repeatedly s- ah. stab her in the back with the, their lances, their spears. Right? Okay. Um, then one grabbed a big stone and smashed her in the face. Okay. So I think it's safe to say. Let's just say we're moving on from her. She's out, right? Yeah. She's just out. Yeah. So the Apaches left, and they took Mercedes, and uh, they took the dress. Okay. Oh, these devils. I don't know where you're going, but maybe they just were they were looking to put on a play, like a Shakespeare thing. Oh, well, wait a minute. We are doing Goldilocks. <laughs> we will now do Goldilocks. Um, one of them put on Larsen's shoes. No way. Shoes. This maze is far too hot. I cannot eat all this maze. And this maze over here is far too cold. I also can't eat this. No, that's Goldilocks. However, this maze in the middle, this maze is perfect. Is this supposed to be Shakespeare? Is... Goldie Knox, not Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the Apaches puts on Larsena's shoes. Okay. Just uh, after sunset, uh, Larsena. I mean, they're playing by a different set of rules. I feel like already they're like operating on another level. Yeah, right oh, now. totally, one hundred percent. Like while these, while the the lumberjack people and John are just like, she went this way. They're like, be her, and we will fool them. <laughs> so. Uh, so she comes to right after sunset, okay. and she heard John and the other men up at the up on the top of the ridge. Okay, uh, but because it was getting dark, they couldn't see her. Uh, so she tried to call out, but she was way too weak. Ugh. And then Jaw saw her footprints moving up the hill, and they took off in pursuit. Okay, and as they moved off, she uh, slipped back into unconsciousness. Okay, so word by now but had reached not dead. Yes. Well, well, we'll you don't see. Know. I mean, it's we not great. See. It's not great. Word by now had reached the fort. Forty-five men were sent, seventeen of whom were trackers, mostly Apache. Okay. Um, they met up with a civilian posse that came from Tucson, and as they followed the Apache tracks, they realized the Apaches had split into two groups. Mercedes also had now started dropping pieces of clothing on the trail. Okay. So the soldiers from damn the- it, it's just a fashion bug. So, so the soldiers from the fort had been fighting with a group of Apaches who lived uh, in Ara Aravipa uh, Canyon. So everyone assumed those were the Apaches who had taken Larsena and Mercedes. Right. Okay. Um, the U.S. soldiers were holding some prisoners uh, uh, at the fort, so uh, they made those Apaches the trackers. They forced them to. Okay. So when they arrive at uh, the Aravapa Canyon, the captain gave one of the Apache prisoners a horse okay. and told him to go in and negotiate uh, for the release of Larsena and Mercedes. Interesting. Okay. So he said they would wait uh, eight days, and if he didn't come back by then, then they would go to Fort Buchanan and kill all of the other Apaches he was holding there. Okay. That's quite a long That's negotiation a long stretch. <laughs> what? Is that... 
Is it's that a, a proper a, limit to be thrown I don't know. That's just nature? a super long I wait. mean, if you're that one dude, you're like, <laughs> okay, eight? I'll see you later. Eight? Did you did you mean eight? Did you that's mean days? That's right. Eight days. We're not idiots. We're going to give you eight days to close this deal, and then we it, will start killing. You can see it, though. It's right. I know. Well, we figure the first day you want to get comfortable, and the second, third day, jet lag might be a thing you're dealing with. Fourth and fifth days, obviously, will... Well, I mean, we don't want you to jump in right away. Grease the palms a little. <laughs> day six, maybe you bring it up, or day uh-huh. seven. Yeah. But by day eight, we expect something out of you. Uh, and no running away. Uh, no. Even though uh, eight uh, days is a I crazy amount of time for you to have on your own. In Canada. In eight days, exactly. I was just about to say, you could easily make it to Canada. Thanks for the horse. You could make it. I mean, surely you could be on a ship of some kind somewhere else. And and that's right. We've given you a horse. So. By the way, I hate everyone in the prison. They're all dicks. Well, that's... That's uh, how we're sweetening the pot. And would you rather nine to ten days? I feel like you're yeah, pushing yeah, back. Yeah, All yeah, right, yeah. we'll give you 11 days. Then we expect you to be right back here. That's 13 days from today, friend. So a few days later, the prisoner comes back. By the way, that's the captain. Good luck. Uh, a prisoner. <laughs> I mean, what, like, what are your options back then? You're like, I'll go with what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> what's your style? I just don't do anything. A few days later, the prisoner came back and said the uh, Aravipa Apaches did not have uh, the females. Okay. But they knew who did. They knew which tribe did. Okay. And they could negotiate with them for the girl, but the, the woman had already been killed. Okay. So this is reliable information from what we know. Now, for their trouble in doing this negotiation, they wanted two prisoners released, and they wanted uh, some goods, some you know shit to have. Okay. So now, uh, now Widow John, right, heads back to so the So she court. did pass. Well, well, that's what he just found out. So everyone on everyone's on board with the exchange. Uh, quote, there was no hesitating about acceding to the Indians' terms. One-sided as they were, and every effort was immediately put forth to carry the agreement into effect. So everyone's, everyone's like, on board, get Mercedes back. Okay. Um, By any means happen. necessary, right? So with the two prisoners, the captain headed uh, into the Aravipa Canyon. Apparently, what they found was quite shocking. Quote, the San Pedro Riverbank was literally swimming with Indians. I never saw so many in my life. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So what's the, the play? So the prisoner exchange uh, goes forth. Uh, Mercedes ran into, now, now it says Kirkman. I hope I didn't screw this up. Anyway. Mercedes runs in a, uh, they, they do the old, you walk at the same time as we, you know, they release at the same time. Okay. Um, so she, the little girl runs into Kirk, Kirkland's arms and uh, told him she was hungry. But those are her first words? Yeah, I'm okay. hungry. Okay. Uh, then the group of whites left as quickly as possible. They got the fuck out of there. And they rode back to Tucson. Uh, two days later, they got there and the whole town celebrated. Church bells ringing, everyone comes out. Mercedes is given back to her mother. Then they hold a military ball. Uh, and the captain and Mercedes are the guests of honor. No one knew that Larsena was still alive. Oh, jeez, damn it! So she woke. She wakes up in a <laughs> snowbank. <laughs> she's still lodged. Snowbank. Yeah. Jesus. She's still lodged against the tree on the cliff. Uh, she melts snow in her hand to drink and to wash her stab wounds. Smart. Uh, but most of the stab wounds are on her back, which she couldn't reach. Right. Her blonde hair is now a mass of clotted blood. Cool. Yeah. Also a good look, though. Yeah. Um, this is this is uh, when she joins a band, metal. Right. Norwegian right. death metal. <laughs> right, right. Uh, she didn't know how long she had been unconscious, just fucking laying there. Kay. She had no idea. Uh, so the sun is shining, which helps her get warm. She's pretty close to naked, as we said. Right. Right? Um, aside from the slip... Uh, and now, because she's on the edge of a cliff, she was able to look out and figure out where she Worst was. Worst place to have a slip is the edge of a cliff. What kind of slip? Keep going. <laughs> so she looks out, and she sees uh, a, a butte that she knows, which has another name, but it's also called Orphan Butte. She recognizes that butte? Yeah, it's a tiny fucking hill, but for some reason she... she re- that one. I think because it's out in the middle of nowhere, it's just a little thing. Uh, so, yeah, no. she recognizes that. Okay. Um, I mean, there's such there's so little to like remember in this time that yeah. you're like, I remember that lump of a little, dirt. It's like it looks like an anthill. <laughs> I remember it. Uh, 
so uh, that from that landmark, she can get her sense of direction. Okay. So uh, Lucena was uh, able to uh, climb up. Um, she uh, too weak to climb up. I'm sorry, she's too weak to climb up. Right. Okay. So yeah. she decides to slide down. Well, uh, you're talking about the the side of wherever she is, the side of the yeah right ridge. Yeah. Okay. Um, so each inch brought her tons of pain. When she made it down to the end of the uh, edge of the cliff, whatever it is, she passes out and wakes up the next morning. Good. I mean, as terrible as this this is, these have got to be great sleeps. <laughs> I, I bet you there's nothing like the before death kip. You know, where you just I'm like literally, you don't know what day it is. That's a sleep. What day is it? Yeah, yeah. I slept 31 hours. I mean, I feel really rested, for, but I'm dying. But my God. Um. Oh, I never showed you where the cool Indian. The, the uh, this is the canyon where the oh wow where the, all the all the the huge tribe was. Oh it's wow, fucking rad. Yeah, I want to go there. That'd be pretty like intimidating. Oh uh, okay. So she's in she's in like a pretty wooded area now. Um, uh, it's called uh, Madera, I think. Sure. Madera Canyon. Sure. Um, so it's pretty wooded. It's hilly. Um, the, it's uh, you know it's not like you would think of Arizona. So she's in a Hugh Glassian. Yeah, she's in like predicament. a predicament. Yeah, there's snow and it's there's mountains and there's but a this, lot of trees. But this, I mean, even like looking at that, like the idea of like being alone in an area like where, I mean, there's just nothing. No, there's nothing. Like your plan is like okay. Yeah. I'll crawl for the end of my life. Yeah. I okay. mean, there there is fucking nothing where she is. She's just out in the middle of nowhere. No um, cell reception. No, nah, his cell phone's not working at all. Um, so, uh, like I said, she passes out, wakes up the next morning. Sun wakes her up again. Every morning she wakes up and the sun heats her up and then she gets going. Okay. Um, so she's now able to pull herself up and she leans against a tree. Um, there's, she looks, there's a valley below her. She's like kind of up on the foothills, I guess, of the mountains. There's no water in the valley below. So she decides she's going to stay in the mountains uh, because there's still... Snow, snow around drink, that's, right. that's hasn't melted because of the shade from the trees. Okay. So using Orphan uh, Butte to guide her, she started walking. But her shoes have been taken by the Apaches, so she's stepping on rocks, thorns, and harsh brush. But she also doesn't. She also has the Valley Disease. She's also got the Valley Disease. So okay. she uh, she walks a short distance and then she collapses. Okay. But she keeps on going. She lost track of how many days she was on the move. The sun would wake her up in the morning and then burn her during the day. Uh, Larsena was very fair-skinned. And she would melt snow in her hands to drink. She would eat grass and seeds and berries and one time came across some wild onions. That was a big day. Oh, God. Well, you know you, things are bad when you're like, oh, yes, onions. Her breath must have just, just been a fucking nightmare. Already bad, but then when you're just like eating onions like apples, you're like, oh, ah. Uh. Yeah, I mean, if someone found it, they'd be like, whoa, okay. Whoa, whoa, okay. No, I got to go. What is going on? I got to go. Good Lord. Um, after a short time, her feet were just completely fucking sausage. Like, they're just cut yep. up. Onion and sausage. Now, that's a meal. Pebbles. Is yeah. Hopefully, this is her, like, producer. <laughs> <laughs> Pebbles, because she was walking, had worked their way under the skin through the open wound. So, now there's, like... There's like little pebbles stuck in her feet. Oh boy! So now she can't walk, so she starts crawling. Okay. Um, and sometimes she would get enough courage to walk on all fours like an animal. So she's also scurrying like a. Oh, <laughs> sure, sure. It's beautiful. Well, I don't know what it is, but it smells like onions. <laughs> one day. <laughs> I don't know what it, it walks like a bear and it stinks like onions. So one day she comes across this big-looking nest of dried grass. And she looks at it, and she's just like, that fucking looks amazing. She, she crawls inside, and holy shit, it's comfortable, it's warm. She's about to fall asleep when she realized she was kicking it in a bear den. Oh, God. Jesus. So she crawled away as fast as she could. Ah, uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, so this is Goldilocks. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then uh, a little ways away, she used her hands to scratch a hole in the sand. So instead of sleeping like a bear, she slept like a badger. Uh, much yeah. worse. Much God, worse. once you've had that bear, like oh my god, it's true. I mean, she went from first class to coach. Totally. They were like, Sorry, one hundred percent. Yeah. Now she's got... How would you like to st stay in the toilet? <laughs> I mean, you're talking about a hibernating den. No, it's look fucking at this. horrible. I got Directv. Then you're just in shit. Yeah. 
but she she couldn't lie down. Okay, right, because of her back. So because yeah, the one's on her back. So she would sleep on her knees and elbows. Oh God. And then she would keep waking up dreaming of food. Sometimes she would think <laughs> she could see it, and she would reach out to grab. What she I woke myself up was again. Food, and it would just grabbing be for food. A rock or something. It's always fun when you're sleeping like a wheelbarrow dreaming of peaches that you can't touch. <laughs> so, so like I said, she's gone through the mountains. Uh, this meant it was harder than if she was just on, you know, a flat surface. Sure. So Lysena would crawl up a steep ridge and then lose her balance and she'd slide back da- down. One day she made negative progress because she slid further down than where she started in the morning. Oh, that's got to be tough. <laughs> It's a tough day right there. I mean, that's a hope killer. Oh, dude. You're, I mean, these are this, everything so far is kind of a hope killer. Like, these <laughs> people who are able to do stuff like this work on another mental yeah. like level, you know? But yeah. we all know that sensation of work falling apart. But when your life depends on it, yeah, this sliding different. past where you started, like, no! This is different than writing when you go, oh, I got to scrap the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Page yeah. one. Or no, like when it didn't save for two minutes and you're like, oh, I got to go back to there. Good. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Now imagine that's your body and it's stabbed. So because she was crawling and basically had no clothes on, the skin on her arms and leg was now, legs were now destroyed. The skin was peeling away, but still she goes on. She crawled during the day on her blood raw limbs and curled up into a ball to sleep at night during freezing weather. Okay. As you do. <laughs> so it's pretty hot. Yeah, no, this sounds it's a pretty fun. hot story. One morning, after the sun warmed her up, she got up and looked out and realized she was on a ridge. She she looked down and uh, saw a road that led to a lumber camp. Oh boy. And then she heard voices. Oh boy, oh my god, voices? And soon an, <laughs> soon an ox team being driven by two men is rolling by. So she screams. I'm steaks! <laughs> I'm a bunch of steaks with a head! <laughs> but she had so little strength she could barely muster a scream. <laughs> and they did not hear her. Oh, no! No, the worst. Larsena then tore off what was left of her slip and tied it to a stick and she waved it over and over and over again, but the two men never looked in her direction, God. and soon they were gone. Ah, so she put the tattered slip back on and kept going. <laughs> She's getting dressed again. Okay. Um, and then she headed toward the lumber camp. She, so she knows. Keep go- I mean, um, that is gutting. But Talk she doesn't- about sliding past your starting point. I mean, them being there, and you're oh. like, bah, bah. <laughs> Take off things, waving it. <laughs> but she also doesn't want to be out on the road because Apaches, right? Oh my God! At this point, can't, at the, you're you're at the point now where you can do the fake "I'm dead." Oh yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's the move right I now. I mean, just the smell alone. Oh yeah. Was, oh good. Someone killed her with onions. <laughs> <laughs> good lord. So. Uh, she figured it was about a mile or two away, and she's crawling. And so she crawls and she crawls. She doesn't get there. Night comes. She sleeps again. Jeez. The next day, she keeps crawling. And then she happened to find herself in the middle of her camp where she had been abducted by the Apaches. Okay. And there's flowered coffee all over the ground where they had cut it up and thrown it. Uh-huh. And, and all the feathers, right, from the feather bed. Uh, so Larsana starts picking flour out of the feathers. And she made little flour cakes. Um, and then uh, she saw that the men who had just gone by on the ox car the day before had stopped there and made a fire by the creek, and it was still hot. Oh, boy. So she blew life into it and got a fire going. And then uh, using the water from the creek, she made, made the flowers into ca- flour into cakes, and she ate them and went to sleep. Okay. Fucking killing it. Even better. Awesome day. Awesome day. I just, I'm still, if I'm her on Monday, I'm like thinking back to the fact that these guys rode past me. Uh, I mean, I don't have skin, but awesome yeah. day. Yeah. Killer day. Um, the next morning, uh, she uh, wakes up. Uh, but this time, it's not because the sun is shining on her. It is because of the sound of axes hitting trees and men talking. So she crawled toward the trail that led up to the, the pinery. What is it going to take for someone to see her? <laughs> Um, where John had been working, right? So she, that's where she is. She's close to where they are. 
Um, she's almost completely naked, burned completely red. The burns are blistered, right? She's been out in the sun so long yeah. that she's just a blistered, red, yeah. burnt mess. Um, she's a skinny bag of bones because she hasn't eaten in <laughs> two weeks or something. Uh, uh, and the skin is just hanging off her. Like, torn I, I, skin. I get it. I get just... it. I get it. Yeah, she's 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 jerky. So there's a black cook named Hampton Brown at the camp, and he has a white wife. Uh, and Brown is walking down the trail as Larsena is coming up. Okay. Um, and so he looks and he sees this barely clothed white person with clumpy, blonde, matted hair. I think the hair color is blood at this point. Crawling. It's like a. It's like a fucking like the ring. It's like some Japanese horror right, movie right, coming right, at right. him. Uh, and so he thinks that she's a ghost. Oh God. <laughs> Okay, so she just cannot catch a break. Um, and so he you, runs. You see me. Ah! <laughs> oh, no, please. So he runs back toward the camp and grabs his pistol. Oh, no. What? And then he calls for all the other uh, the lumberjacks there, and he tells them what he saw. We're going to so, go kill a ghost. <laughs> so they think, they think that she's actually a squaw that has been kicked out for some reason. Okay, so not band. everyone's going with Hampton's ghost theory. But they theory. still all get guns because okay. they're like a fucking squaw. So... Um, so when they get there, the ghost rasped out, I lost set a page. Like she says her name. And they're oh. like, what the fuck? So Brown picks her up and carries her back to the camp, at which I would imagine she's going, ow, 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 yeah, ow. Yeah, the whole way, yeah. No skin, no skin, no skin. <laughs> Hold me like I don't have skin. All right. We're like going to float her down the river to where we are. So um, he takes her back. Uh, his wife starts to washes her, basically. Um takes the pebbles out of the soles of her feet. Oh, that's a uh, Paul Simon song, right? <laughs> She's got pebbles in the soles of her feet. <laughs> um, she pulls the thorns that are all in her skin and in her open meat parts and whatever she has. <sighs> uh, she cleans all the festering wounds that she had. <laughs> and she feeds her. Um, and then after she dressed Larsena in clean clothes, I assume super carefully. I assume no socks. My clothes at this point. What, what's, well, you what's still gotta. Other? You still gotta. Where's she going? She's know, in but, bed. Yeah, but there's men around. And yeah, they just saw her. They, I know, like, but you know, cleaned up. You know, I, I mean. I'm telling you, if this is me, you keep me nude and you just keep me in a bed and you keep cleaning you're my not, wounds and looking for pebbles. You're not surrounded by horny lumberjacks. Oh, the hell, I'm not. <laughs> uh, so, um. Larsena asked for tobacco and went to sleep. She's a, she's a huge, she loved chewing tobacco. That, that was her a, thing. That, I, like, I like what I'm hearing. That was her jam. A little January Jones action. I like what that. What was she saying something? Put tobacco over my mouth. Oh, <laughs> God. Really? You did, okay. Skull. skull. Okay, she wants skull. Uh, she had been believed dead for 16 days. Wow. One of the lumberjacks rode as fast as he could to uh, Kirkland's ranch. So John was in Tucson at this point, and Kirkland gave the lumberjack a fresh horse, and he kept on riding to Tucson. Now, even though John had been told by the Apaches that Larsena was dead, he never actually really believed it. So he was actually- What was his theory? He was actually, at this time, well, he just didn't trust them yeah. that they told the truth. So oh, right, okay. At this point, he's preparing a third expedition to go look for her, and then this lumberjack rolls in and tells him, John jumps on a horse and heads for the lumber camp, and he brings a doctor with him and a friend. When they arrived, they couldn't believe what they saw. Hi, 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 honey. Oh, 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 my God. Hi. The friend later said, quote, What a sight, emaciated beyond description. Her hands and knees and legs and arms, a mass of raw flesh almost exposing the bones, caused by crawling over the cruel rocks uphill and downhill. The doctor looked Lucarna Luc over and told John there was no hope for saving her. She would die. But John wasn't about to give up. How the hell is that the diagnosis now? Well, what do you mean? Well, like, she got through all of that with all this, and now she's, like, found. Why is he, like, it's not looking good for her? It's like, dude. But he's basically looking at, like, a Skeletor situation. She's, she's like, been, I don't like, know. Skeletor for over two weeks. Yeah, but he's, now he's, like, I'm just know. saying let's not bet against the Rocky Balboa of mountain I crawling. I know, but you're, if you're a doctor in this time, you're like, I don't know. Do. Yeah, well, Did you give her chewing yeah, tobacco? Yeah. <laughs> so you gave her tobacco. You gave her some snuff? Mm. All right. Uh, Has anyone tried to get more blood out of her? Coffee? Yeah, I don't know what we should do. 
but she's going to die oh, and we're going to move oh, it along. Oh, scare her. Have you tried scaring her? We should her? definitely scare her. Nope, then let's fill her with some of those feathers. We'll make a day of it. So John's not going to give up. He puts uh, Listen in a wagon, uh, drives as carefully as he can Ow. down to Tucson. Ow. Um, the doctor stays in back with her in the wagon and then keeps a watch over her back in Tucson. Okay. A traveling Englishman uh, came to Tucson at this point, and he described her as, quote, sunken temples, the loops drawn so tightly over the jaw that each tooth could be easily counted through them. Oh, wow. I mean, it's hard to, like, <laughs> that's how you write. The <laughs> arms scarcely larger than a man's thumb. Oh, sweet God. And a continuous cry for food. Well, so give her the food. Yeah, seriously. Aaron, I mean, <laughs> Aaron's looking at his thumbs. That, I looked at my thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> so she barely uh, clings to life for several weeks, and then somehow slowly starts to recover. Okay. Um, but see, the thing is, is when you're when you go that long, your organs start to shut down. Yeah, shit. there's like problems. So for sure. Um, when the friend who had com- accompanied him to the camp. Saw her later that summer. He was, quote, amazed at the blooming woman before me. Oh, hello. Well, she is back in sex shape, is she not, John? What? Uh, I don't like the way as you're a talking. Friend, to, I don't like as the way you're friend, talking, sir. Uh, purely as a friend, but she is very sex shaped now. Well, I think. No, no, I'm not going to. No, I won't even do it on this basis. Nope. I'm going to masturbate. Well, that obviously will allow. Her scars finish slowly... in the plant, Harv. <laughs> He's wow. All her scars slowly healed. Uh, when he was better, John took Larsena to a cabin he built near the mouth of the Madera Canyon. He t- okay. Where she is. There, Wait. they could start their married life over. Okay, a mulligan. It's about ten miles away from the ranch in, in Apache Country. What are they doing that for? I don't fucking know. Why would you go back there? Why would you go to an isolated cabin in the middle of fucking <laughs> yeah, nowhere when yeah, you were just... In Apache country. Do you remember the Apache experience? <laughs> yeah. Because it but wasn't great. I think great. I look back on the good times, like the snow melting and <laughs> the times I didn't slide past my beginning point of the day. <laughs> you know what I remember best? What's that? River flower cakes. Mm, river flower cakes. Uh, By the way, that's him making that call. That's not her. She's probably like, I don't think so. Oh, come on. It's like lightning. It can't happen to someone twice. On January 27th, 1861, the Aravipa Apache Raiders uh, attacked a ranch in the Sonoita Valley. Uh, They kidnapped the rancher's 11-year-old stepson. The previous fort captain, right, the guy we saw earlier, he he was gone now. He'd gone back east because the Civil War is about to kick off. Um... And a new inexperienced lieutenant was brought in uh, to pursue the Apaches. So there's a new guy there. Oh, boy. Inexperienced. So he confronts uh, Chiricahua Chief Cochise. Oh, what a name. Yeah. Cochise denied any involvement. So the lieutenant uh, had several of Cochise's people taken hostage. Oh, boy. I don't think I, uh, see, I don't think you mess with Cochise. No. Um, and then, uh, I guess he didn't get what he wanted because the lieutenant had the hostages hung. I feel like this is going to take a turn. Well, now these are Apache, so it turns out they're not into that, and they're right. badasses, right. so a war was on. Okay. Uh, all started by a fucking idiot. Right. Uh, the Apaches struck all over ruthlessly. Warriors attacked the uh, Santa Cruz Valley, killing 150 of the people on the ranches there. Okay, so <laughs> at this point, bad policy. Bad, yeah. Yeah. Bad call. Around this time, John Page took a second job escorting uh, a wagon to Fort Breckenridge. He needs extra money uh, because uh, Larsena is pregnant. On February 20th, 1861, his party was watering their horses along a wash when the Apaches attacked. Three of the men managed to escape. The rest did not. John was killed. Uh, when they found him, they found that his horse's throat was cut, but not by the Apaches. Turns out the men held off the natives for over a day, and they killed the horse to drink its blood. Oh, sweet bastard. Why what? did you wait three days? What? Three days before you drink God a horse. God damn, you really... You don't drink a horse on day <laughs> We're one. We're arguing about different shit right now, okay? 
Give me a moment, <laughs> sir. You knew this. I can't imagine the idea. Nay. Like, when you said basically the idea is that, like, in my head, the Apaches just slit the throats just to be dicks or some version of that. Yeah. But the idea of the drink, it's blood. You were just near a river, right? Yeah. Well, but that's for strength. And also, like, how do you, it's not a Capri Sun. Like, it's got to be like, all right, everyone, get your mouths under its neck. Oh, we no. We can only you, do this <laughs> waterfall you, once. Yeah, I mean, that really squirts out. Here we go. The way, when I do it. Uh, so John is buried right where he's found. Um, then his handkerchief, his pocketbook, and a lock of his hair were brought to Larsena. By? By whoever was saying he was dead. Like Good a- news, bad news, Larsena. <laughs> um, he's dead, but. Look at, we got his kerchief. Here's his hair and hanky. Here's a pocketbook, and we took a part of him. Uh, the part from the top of the head, we were going to take a nose or an eye. So but you'd... we didn't want to be graphic, so we uh, reckoned maybe we'd just give you a, b- a part of his hair. Here's some of his hair. Here you go. Anyway, congratulations. You can put it on that baby you got to so raise alone. you are single. All right. Howdy. Which brings me to my next question. Uh, oh, boy. Our next question. Mm, uh, hello. We're looking to <laughs> be husbands with a wife. So Larsena's father came for her and brought her to the family's home so her sisters would take care of her. Um, the, the family home is, it's it's actually, I believe it's like a, a destination now, might be. Well, anyway, it wasn't then. So it's I mean, a stone, like, it's oh, a stone I, house. Honestly, all I saw was the little shitty, like, the dog? gazebo. <laughs> oh, the dog. gazebo. That's not a gazebo. Oh, come on. You're telling me you're not having tiki barbecues in there? Uh, so, um... In September, she remember she was pregnant, so she gives yep. birth to a kid, Marianne. Okay. Um, her sisters take care of her. Uh, the Civil War comes about, and so a lot of the soldiers are now moved out of Arizona. Okay. Um, so the Penningtons are worried that the lack of military would lead the Apaches to becoming more bold. Sure. So the Stone House uh, along the Santa Cruz was now in very dangerous territory. At one point. Apaches came and Larsena had to flee with Marianne and hide in a fortified mine. Well, I, at this, why does she not uh, go, go far? Go somewhere else? Go so anywhere far else? from here. The fuck if go I so know. Go so far from here. Who is just like kicking it in? Oh, there's a war on and yeah. there's Apaches. And oh, by the way, uh, I can't defend myself against uh, Apaches. Uh, yeah. What the fuck am I doing? Yeah. So, okay. Uh, so she remains. Uh, the family now starts constantly moving from place to place. So they're Husseining it. <laughs> they do it in the business. Um, 1864, they're in Tubac, and uh, we're the only people living there. Now, remember, this is where there are like 1,000 people. The fort is nearby. Now they're the only people. Okay. Everyone else had left after an Apache attack in 1861. Lascena's brothers now are always carrying rifles in case of an Apache attack. Around this time, both Larsena and her daughter came down with smallpox. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Good Lord. Um, so uh, she survives. Her daughter survives. Okay. Um, and they even survived the cure, which was a strict diet of bread and water. Mm. I mean, That's how you got rid of smallpox? That's what a fucking idiot did to get yeah, rid of smallpox. Right? That... I'd be like, cake, whatever you got. Let's do this. <laughs> but is the idea that, like... I'm going down. Well, we believe this is caused by your sweet tooth. Um... You've been getting a little thick. Yeah. So, but is that that worked, um, or no, it was cured it's just from some other circumstance that right. it worked? Okay. Um, the Pennington family did not fare well as a group. For years, they kept moving from town to town to work uh, to find work and avoid Apache attacks. The men got jobs driving wagons and were gone for long periods. So the young boys in the family started carrying rifles that were longer than them. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting look. In 1867, one of uh, Larsena's sisters died of malaria. Okay. Uh, another brother, uh, Jack, was killed by Apaches uh, when they stole his ox. And eyebrows. Uh, and then he chased them. Oh, boy, come on. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to know when to fold them, bud. But his his eyes are super close together, so. Um, <laughs> wow, what a move. You there! Give that back. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, that was a bad idea. <laughs> Whoop, my life's done now. Whoops. Uh, in 1869, Larsena's- Also, look at that collar. Yeah. It looks like someone like b- broke his body. Yeah, he doesn't know how to turn his head. Yeah. 
Which way am I facing? In 1869, her father and another brother were killed by Apaches while working on the farm. Okay. Um, the rest of the family then decided to move to California, okay, right? So sure. they're doing it. It's all happening. Smart. Right on time, too. Oh, there's some Apache warriors. Oh, wow. Good Lord. I mean, that's just yeah. fucking badass. Yeah. That's badass. Um, the rest of the family goes to California, but they only made it 20 miles. Uh, because then one of... Larsena's sisters came down with pneumonia. Twenty miles in, they can't get in. They can't. They can't catch a fucking. But how break. long is that? I mean, this is this family should be called can't catch a break. What is that? Three days? Maybe. So oh, she could do twenty miles in in uh, two days. Okay, Maybe. So yeah, they didn't make it. They was very there. fast. <laughs> very very fast. Um. So she died. Time for bread and water. She died while they were looking for a doctor. So now the only members of the Pennington family left are. Larsena and one of her brothers, who then he got the fuck out and he moved to Texas. But Larsena, totally stubborn, refuses to leave Tucson. Okay. Boy, she really likes Tucson. And she falls in love with a man. Okay. Um, who I don't have here. Oh. Upper left. Second husband. I guess. Second husband. Um, his name is uh, uh, William Scott. He's Hello. a Scottish lawyer. Oh, you did a Scottish accent. Oh, that's right. He's a Scot- I, I never he's a, forget when I met Sweet Larsana. He's a Scottish uh, Look at lawyer, his tie. a judge. He's killing it. Yeah, just tie it in a knot and have your day. Um, they had two kids. Okay. She uh, then went on to live a very quiet and happy life until her death in 1913. Okay. So after all that shit, she she just stuck there it. and married a Scot. Yeah. Mercedes did not uh, live long. She got married at 18 to a county sheriff and died at 26 during childbirth okay. with her fourth child. Good Lord. So. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, that's that's the female Hugh Glass. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah, she's a fucking badass. Yes. Hugh Glass ceiling. Hugh. What? Huh? I felt like it might work in my head. <laughs> Boy, that's crazy, though. Um, there really is. There's like a, I, I truly think. I mean, what, how do you think you fare in one of these positions? Um, like I'd you're you're dead. in a position where you're gonna have to survive 16 days of just pretty much crawling and drinking snow. No, do I, you make it? No, I roll. I I try I to jump off the cliff. I quit. I absolutely quit. Yeah, I'm off the cliff. If you're seeing me in the if you're seeing me in the center of the Hugh Glass moment, what you're seeing is you're like, why is he chipping that big rock out? And then I get that big rock, and you see me just start smashing my own <laughs> head in, as hard as possible. I like. Like I get trying to survive the first couple of days, but once you can't walk and then your your legs and arms are, are raw, yeah. I'm like, oh, once you're sleeping, oh, once oh you're, I get it, I get it. This isn't supposed to be happening. I get it. Once you're sleeping as a wheelbarrow grabbing at fruit that you're dreaming about, no, you're that's just a problem. Fucked. Hey, look at me, I'm meat. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. There's just I don't know. I my guess is that that is if you if you could hook humans up to it, you would find that that's in like one percent of people. I can barely handle it when I don't have internet. Yeah, and I've seen you in such a situation. You do not handle it well. I don't. You start crawling on all fours. <laughs> Eating seeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I can't live. That's my jam. Yeah. Wouldn't you fucking straighten out your goddamn pennant if you're going to take that fucking photo? Yeah, but, you know, I mean, yeah, truly. I mean, I, I who knows how long they're actually waiting in these positions, but I mean, that's a, like, you know that's a that's pretty good for before pictures were really happening a lot. Yeah. Um, so Imagine wanna... if you told them how our phones were going to ruin pictures. I know, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna uh, people are uh, saying they don't like listening when we're talking about photos, but I'm gonna start trying to I'm gonna put them up somewhere, I guess, maybe on oh. Instagram or Can't I don't know. I gotta figure out a place. Is that the point? Uh, yeah, that was the point. But now they're um, yelling. They yell. People yell. What do they say? I hate it when you guys are talking about what they look like. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, how long do we talk about what they look like for? Like uh, five minutes total a show? I don't know. Man. Hey, when you when you put up the YouTube video, can you uh, can you put markers where the pictures are? Or is that too much of a pain in the ass? Too much of a pain in the ass. Too much of a pain in the ass. That's okay, that's attitude. not gonna happen. But we definitely reached out to Aaron, and uh, he said no. Terrible attitude. Nice try, Aaron. Uh, all right. Uh, anything? I got uh. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, 
carry, carry on? Is that what we say? Carry on? Never said that. Carry on our, my wayward son? Is that our thing? Aaron, cut the feed now. Carry on my wayward No.